excited. Ebony always speaks with such command of the stage, and she just has this way of engaging people. So I know that you're in for an awesome treat. I've seen some of the props, and I know that it's going to be good. So please help me welcome Ebony Bogan for her icebreaker. judge a book by its cover, and every person is the sum total of all the parts of their life. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, picture it. United States, Ohio, bicentennial year, 1976. A bouncing baby girl was born. And she had a head full of hair. <laughs> Who could think of that? I came custom ordered by my mother. My mom told God that she wanted a brown skinned, long haired girl with dimples and bold legs. <laughs> So, God truly does answer prayer. Going through my life, Mom loved to dress me up in pretty dresses and socks with bunches of lace. I didn't have any of that stuff. I didn't have the lace socks available right now. So I would use this hat as a symbol of the Easter bonnet. Mom dressed me to the nines when we would go to church. And so... This was part of my upbringing, and I was taught to be a very feminine young lady, although I turned into a tomboy temporarily for a while. I was on the usher board at church, and I would have my white gloves, and I would usher, but every time that I wanted to join something at church, mom would say, if you join it now, you have to stay in for the entire year. She was trying to teach me about perseverance, about commitment. If you're going to say, I want to join these four clubs, then you have to be in them for the whole year. And she ended up having to take me to church about four days a week because I was in all of those clubs. <laughs> Later on in life, being a child of the 70s and being named Ebony, of course, I had a cultural <laughs> aspect to my life. And so I believe it was around age 11 or 12 when I really started getting into African culture. I started to seek out knowledge about certain culture because I didn't see myself in the media. I didn't really see myself in even the dolls I had. My mom had to go far away to get the dolls that looked like me. And so I found that I had to seek out more of me and just had to make it more deliberate. And so that's what I did. Going a little deeper into that, I took up African dance. Oh my goodness, I loved African dance. I would African dance all the time. And so I joined Harambe Youth Organization, and when I became 18, they made me an instructor. That taught me cultural pride and also to take care of my body because I needed to be fit in order to perform those dance moves. Also, I would mentor younger dancers and younger people and learn how to teach myself so that I could teach others. Cardinal Mooney High School. I love my alma mater. I love my alma mater. Cardinal Mooney was such an awesome experience for me. My mother took the time to make sure I had a varied experience. When I actually entered junior high, she sent me to Volney Rogers so that I could get some diversity in my life. And then Colonel Mooney was the capstone 
of that diversity training as a young person. I attended this Catholic school for the first time and I jumped in and I got involved. I was in marching band, such as it was, and I temporarily was on the track team and I joined the choir and it just built up my self-confidence and I met a bunch of wonderful, wonderful people at Cardinal. Then, when I graduated from Cardinal Mooney, I went to culinary school. I was used to good food. I was taught that food was like love. Yeah. I heard that <laughs> I heard that one time I told my mom, I know you love me because you fix me good food. <laughs> And so, not just my mom, but other people in my family would definitely feed me very well. So I got accustomed to good food and I wanted to do it. I had a heart of hospitality towards people. And so, I went to the Culinary Institute. Later on, I went to YSU. Went to YSU, I joined a number of organizations. I was the Vice President of the Pan-African Student Union. I was a student leader. I went there a number of years, so I probably was a student leader longer than I should have been. <laughs> I got drafted to be somewhat of like an intern for Protestant Campus Ministries, and I joined ROTC. Yeah, this will never fit. <laughs> I joined ROTC and even joined the ranger team, which was something I did not have to do. And I was awarded these two medal awards in ROTC, so I'm very proud of those accomplishments, and I was very proud of the strength that I gained by being a cadet at YSU in ROTC. I was proud I could actually run two miles without dying. I took karate. Yes, this is actually my gi. It's too big. They didn't make them small enough for me. But this was my gi from my karate class. I took Ishinru karate, and it just pushed me in my athleticism to a whole nother level. There were actually very few women in my class, so I had to spar with men a lot. And I was the smallest thing in my class, and we had to do push-ups and knuckle push-ups and all kinds of drills, which... Being an African dancer and coming through ROTC, I was up for the challenge. So we broke some boards and we got up to about a third degree purple belt right next to Brown. Later on in life, I felt a call to the ministry. And so I accepted my call to the ministry. This is one of my clergy shirts. And I was Working at Protestant Campus Ministries and door just, doors just started to open. I was at Martin Luther Lutheran Church, which I had never even been to a Lutheran church, and I was the youth director and then became the full-time outreach director for Martin Luther Lutheran Church. And later on became licensed in my own denomination. So then I just accelerated to this, you know, full-grown church woman. <laughs> and so we all have our church hat that we wear sometimes. And so this is one of the ones I wasn't nervous about bringing out. <laughs> so I learned how to be poised and also sometimes that you can't fight fire with fire all the time. Sometimes I may have taken a little too much stuff off of people, but you do it for the sake of the community and you do it for the sake of the people that are looking up to you at times. So that's what I learned from that. I still wear this hat. <laughs> so job-wise, Western and Southern Financial Group Boot Camp, when I was a licensed insurance agent, trying to teach people about life insurance. Hey, you need some. <laughs> You're going to go sometime. What about this person if you go too soon? Is your family going to be OK? So this is what I did for a period of time, it taught me a lot about personal responsibility on another level. 
another job recent. I worked at Youngstown Police Department as a clerk. <laughs> I worked the radio and when the scanner or whatever, what have you would go off, they would call me and find out who's in this car, what have they done in the past, and is this car stolen? And I would tell them that. Finally, my job at Green Youngstown, which I love working for the city in this capacity because I learn more about environmental issues, how recycling is very important, and how to think about future generations on the earth. So what I find interesting is some people that see me in this capacity don't think I could have ever been in this capacity. Some people look at me and they just freak out if they had seen me in this <laughs> because they think I was some kind of militant, but yet and still, I was an Army ROTC and won an award for being patriotic. So, as I said before, you can't judge a book by its cover, and we are the sum total of all of our parts. Mrs. Toast. <laughs>